Hi, it's Danny here from Off The Tracks. Now, if you want to win yourself a brand new Xbox Series X or even better, a PlayStation 5, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel. It's that simple. All you have to do is hit that red button, which says subscribe. So when the channel has hit 1,000 subscribers, we are going to pick a random name from the list and then you will win one of these prizes. So subscribe. That's all we're asking. Just subscribe. Anyway. Happy riding. Hello and welcome back to Off The Tracks and this is Front Row. My name's Lee and today I'm going to be handpicking one of my favourite creators from the community and asking him the questions you need the answers to. So today it's no other than my favourite photographer in the world. It's Marcus from Thrill Riders. How are you mate? I'm good thanks man. You're way too kind honestly. No, honestly, it's enthusiasm will kill a man one day. And I, I throw that much out. I'm just enthusiastic about the whole community, Marcus. And your photographs, they do something to me, mate. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, don't make me blush. <laughs> mate, so anybody who doesn't know, this is Marcus. Marcus, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so about three years ago, I started a Instagram account called uh, Thrill Riders. And um, yeah, ever since then, I've just been daily posting theme park pictures. And that pretty much sums that up. Um, before Thrill Riders, I w didn't really do much photography at all. Uh, it's pretty much been self-taught over the course of running the account. So okay. so was it literally you started photography, in, uh, photography within the theme park industry? There was no other sort of side entrance or anything? So it was... Um, I've been working in video for a lot longer than I've been working in video for years. And I had all the equipment like SLR cameras and mirrorless and stuff and lenses and all that. So it was just a case of using the knowledge of like framing and stuff like that from video and then just bringing it to the photography side of things. And, I feel like that's um, what sort of stands you apart a lot of the time is, is obviously the quality of the shots is one thing, but the, like the frame and the angle. Like even the one behind you, is that Zadra, is it? Yeah, that's, that, that's Zadra, yeah. Like, like you say, it's, you'd never see it from the angle so close up. And, you know, in that, it, it's unbelievable. So like, I'm used to sort of using phones and stuff and basic digital cameras. <laughs> so you never get that kind of sharpness and that that zoom. So, yeah, it's amazing, I think, man. I think the main thing that I'll, I always go by with um, the majority of my shots is to try and do, like, picture something like people have seen like all these rides before, but like yeah. try and show them in an angle which no one's ever seen it before. Exactly. And that's sort of what I want to try and do with most of the time. So like people, are, if you look at it, you'll think I've seen it, but I've never seen it like that. And that's yeah. sort of like the idea behind it. So is that, is that how you started Thrill Riders? It was just one, you, you started you started going and it just grew, did it? Or, you know, what what sort of like issues did you find early on when you started? Um, I didn't, well, it was sort of like, uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it at the start. It wasn't specifically photography. Um, I was just sort of posting my opinions on mm -hmm. like things with, I guess like iPhone pictures as well. It's, it's not like even today, like it, you can still capture like a really good photo. Oh, yeah. iPhone. Like it doesn't... if you know what you're doing in like say post-production Photoshop or Lightroom or something, you can make a, an image really pop, can't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I mean, especially with the new wide angle lenses that most of the smartphones have now, mm. I like the wide lens is just one of my favorites, but like, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of it, I was just sort of like, um, I suppose posting pictures, obviously it's Instagram, but like, mm. Um, it wasn't daily. It wasn't, it just didn't really have an identity. Um, and then I was like, you know, starting to bring more of the, like the gear I had into the parks, um, which is, which did my back in, it still does. Yeah. <laughs> it's so heavy, like, but yeah, I mean, now it's just almost straight down the route of photography. Um, mm. With a little you found, bit of your, you found your niche there, I think, haven't you? Because I can't watch a video from any sort of like notable YouTuber in, in our community without seeing a Thrill Riders poster. Uh, you know, they're <laughs> everywhere. Like, and, and it's a good thing because it's, the, you know, it is, in my opinion, the sort of the best quality poster or print you're going to get. 
from from any of these rides, especially in the UK. You know, the, the swarm shot and the one that you've just put out. I think it's today, actually, the day of filming, um, yeah. Easter Sunday. Uh, the new Thought Part one that you've edited. To uh, it's just you don't see that, and yeah, I think I think it's great, mate. Oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm definitely going to purchase that Thought Part one. It's next on the <laughs> list. So I have noticed then. So with the thrill rider sort of, it started to to build and stuff. I noticed recently you've started a YouTube channel as well, have you? Is that is that to just complement it or is it just you had so much going on that you thought it'd be a good idea to start one? So that was the that was pretty much the tail off of what I was saying with regards to I've been primarily video for most of my life. Mm. And the photography thing was sort of just side when thrill riders started and now it's okay. obviously become like the main thing but so you've like, gone like full circle really haven't you and you're, you're back to videos in yeah a way. <laughs> i always yeah i just wanted to sort of bring that back like like a i can do this as well like this is almost where it started from mm. and i wanted to sort of take the opportunity to bring that in um the, the channel what I, I posted my first video in like 2018 mm. of like a, it was like a cinematic thing of drayton manor um before everyone was doing cinematics you know these days but uh <laughs> um yeah no it's um it's i want to pick it up more this year um mm -hmm. because it's it's sort of thrill riders is becoming like a quite a big tail off from my bit my business that i've just started yeah so i kind of want to use it as a playground to show the video skills as well as the photo skills. Yeah, it's a good sort of like a good portfolio in a way, isn't it? You know, you've got not only have you got sort of this you know, like little buzzing empire with thrill riders and your posters. You know, you start your YouTube channel and show everybody what you can do on the video side. You're kind of just covering all angles there, aren't you? That's yeah, that's sort of what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, it's a good shout, mate. It's a good shout. So that's covered the first couple of questions. I was going to ask you like what got you into thrill riders, what got you into theme parks, but you've pretty much. You've pretty much sorted that out. Have you always been a bit of an enthusiast? Have you always been in and out of parks? So, I mean, my I blame my theme park sort of enthusiasm on my parents okay. because, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I went. They sort of used to always take me to uh, Thorpe and Chessington back in like the really early two thousands. You know, like Colossus is opening. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you um, caught the you caught the bug there, did you? Yeah, yeah. And I mean I didn't go on anything. I was five years old. But like I I, I didn't I, I mean for years after that I was still too scared to go on anything. But like I you know, I just loved the place because there was just nothing like there was no sort of like other day out where you'd have that much fun even yeah, if you didn't yeah. go on the ride. So and then, yeah, I mean, I started going on, on them eventually. And then literally, it's, it's just the case of I've been going for like most of my life. So, mm. and I've seen Fork change like so much, you know, from like having a farm to <laughs> um, now just be, it's a totally different audience, but I don't want to get into that too much. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Save that um, for off the tracks, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's sort of, how well that's why i like theme parks really and i mm. think that's sort of be similar for a lot of people you know just being brought up with it yeah definitely i mean i i'm, I'm similar i was just always around and my dad took me to the odd theme park growing up and then after when i left school I, I got like a seasonal job at camelot a local theme park and and that was just me i thought and then xavier came along years later he ended up a massive coaster enthusiast mm. and that just completely re sort of reignited the fire in me so it's strange how it can sort of come back to haunt you in it later in life yeah exactly. exactly no i'm more i'm more of an enthusiast now than i've ever been though like xavier's idea to start the channel and everything last year and, and yeah if it wasn't for wasn't for zave and his sort of enthusiasm for it i don't think i'd i'd have i'd have caught that bug so Zave's to blame for me and your mum and dad are to blame for you. So damn, <laughs> it just damn we're off, here. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. It, it but literally, <laughs> it can, you can be with the people that you're with and it just rubs off on you. And then you're like, this place That's is actually... It, yeah. this is and so I, I think I found last year especially, for me, it was like therapy almost because it was such a crap year. Like I'm normally working in the hospitality and like bars and clubs, which a lot of my work's gone at the minute. So it, it was hard to sort of see you know, a light at the end of the tunnel last year when lockdown and everything got into the theme parks with Xavier. And every day I'd be leaving the park feeling brilliant. You know, I didn't, didn't feel down. Or I wasn't worried about maybe jobs and stuff. So yeah. for me, it was just that escapism, I think. 
Yeah, that's the sort of the main thing about it, isn't it? You mm. just go there and you just have a good day without having to worry about anything. That's it. I think that ties me nicely to my next question. And it's it's like, that's why I kind of love the idea of having a couple of your nice posters up, up here behind me, <laughs> just because that escapism. But up until today, my favourite was one of the smiler shots that you had. But today, up until today, I think now it's the Thought Park shot. But what is your favourite photo, uh, video or project that you've made or just been involved with in general? Could you could you pinpoint one for me? Um, I mean, I, like some of the stuff I've actually done with Parks, uh, those are always just like amazing projects mm. to be. Oh, like the official projects, you mean, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like the Tornado Springs and the Chessington sort of shoots. They're like they're just so uh, just mad because you're just sort of like it must be nice because that's that's almost sort of like getting recognition in a way, you know, getting that yeah. gig, isn't it? So I think it must be nice to that's be the in thing because like there's. There's so many more like in, like talented enthusiasts, of course. Like becoming like coming into like the industry. I've spoken to so many people. Um, I mean, you even have to just look at um, Hudson, or like you know, he's an enthusiast, but he does the mm. music for a lot of attractions, and he brings he brings a lot of people together as well in his in his projects, yeah. doesn't he? And, and that's good. Yeah, I, I, that's sort of the thing. Like you know, there's. Um, there's like Kieran and Parks, you know, Parks Bill Sean. Yeah. Um, Sean did uh, the video with Towers and Kieran's done stuff with Chessington. It's so cool seeing all this like mm. there's so many amazing like again, Parks Bill and, and Kieran with the with the Silkstone gang. They're, they're all so talented, you know. There's so many talented people and yeah. you were your photography. And I think that's amazing how not only are we kind of a little niche community, but there's there's real talent in there. Even like, you know, Archie with his music, you know, and uh yeah, and the, yeah. And it's just it's all Awesome. How, how and we now, have got like, these. now the parks are just sort of seeing that and like yeah. thinking we can utilize this absolutely and utilize it yeah it's and we've i've even started to see on some of my outer season documentary stuff some parks like Do- uh, drayton manor of commenting on one and you know i'm starting to even see a lot little bits of interaction with actual parks which yeah. is wild to me i thought you know I, they're the least the, the least likely people to care about what i'm saying you know but there they are in in the community sort of yeah. chatting away on youtube so i think i think one thing that i realized like probably about a year or two probably about a year ago um one thing i started to realize was that you know behind the social media accounts of the parks or merlin annual pass or whatever mm. they're just normal people yeah of course um and then you know once you start sort of start that conversation it's just it becomes a lot more personal um so interacting with you 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 get like you sort of it's it's funny because you sort of you see it as like wow like fort park or chessington and stuff and that have maybe commented on a post and even today like it's still like when you see that notification pop up it's wicked it is yeah it's just um, a little bit of you know because that's the you, you couldn't sort of ask for a, a better you know recognition could yeah, you, than exactly. the park that you're actually doing a video about like nobody else saw uh, obviously people matter and i love getting you know even just a nice vid and a thumbs up anything you know i love it it's fantastic but when you get i think it was drayton manor commented on one of our vlogs and and it was just like that's amazing you know that the actual yeah. person who's running the drayton manor account is taking the time to even just watch skim through it and comment i thought you know that that's what that's what we need i do a lot of social media management and that's that's what you need you like to see in businesses you know just that little bit of sort of interacting, interacting with your fans yeah, yeah definitely i yeah. think it helps with you as well i was we were having a joke if anybody doesn't know we have um off the track discord um and we have a chat on there and we were chatting about your appearance online basically your social media appearance you know and your link in your bio because I do that for a job. I do a lot of social media marketing. And I think that helps with you is how professional everything looks on that side, you know, because you are a fantastic photographer and your photos look great. But if you didn't have social media to match and you had a normal link tree, for instance, with no special and, you know, you didn't show off your talents. I feel like that's where a lot of people go wrong, you know, not, not feel, showcasing yeah. what they do. I think like, yeah, I mean, exactly that. I think with social media what i've found i mean i I've obviously i've only learned as i've been going with thrill riders but mm. like what i've learned from that is that you know that it's like 
hitting the perfect balance of being like professional but like still being engaging yeah because like you've got to integrate it integrate into the community haven't you yeah whilst remaining a business almost at the start i thought like i i you, like even if i went down to my older posts so i'd read them out I'd, I'd be typing things out like we here at thrill riders yeah. and us and who's us it's trying just, to, yeah I, i've been uh, yeah, yeah guilty of that and and yeah, the, no, but, but what you don't do. realize is is that that could end up detrimental, you know, because some people don't want that corporate feel and that, you know, yeah. they it's, want, what do you guys think? My favorite ride's this, and it's that personal interaction. And, and that's what you exactly mean. When you that. stumble across these things that you've done wrong, it can be hilarious sometimes, yeah. can't it? You know, it's just, it, it's just exactly that. Like you can still be seen as professional, even if you're saying my favorite thing is oh, rather absolutely, than yeah. our favorite. You don't and have to do that. I think that. you might realize sometimes it, like it was weird for me when people sort of got into the channel and they'd be commenting sort of over my or Xavier's name in the comments. And that was weird to me. I thought like, you know, it's almost like these people start to get to know you, you know, and then, mm. and then you get to know them through the comments and, and it is that personal touch gets you way further than, yeah. you know, the, and the people end up buying into you, you know, like right. I would, I would, if I wouldn't have met you through discord and OTT, I'd be so much less likely to, to go and purchase something online. But I know you, I know your brand, you know, I check you out on Instagram and it all looks great. That's where I'm going to purchase something from, you know? Yeah. I so. think that's sort of the main bit of advice I'd, I'd give someone who was starting out is mm. what we've just said. Because yeah. just come across like engaging. Like if you say we're, we're a thing, so like I, if I say we're, I'm talking about my followers and like the fact that we're a sort of a community. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But like don't i wouldn't suggest ever suggest just acting like a corporate yeah because it, it, people don't connect with that and, exactly um, yeah and that's where you can go around you try and seem more professional than you need to be at times you know in that sense so yeah, yeah we're not mcdonald's you know let's let's be personal <laughs> people are more likely to buy into that if it is a you know maybe a one-man band and i'm the same with me and xavier so uh, we'll just do stuff together and it's a it's just like this is what we're doing today kind of thing mm. And yeah. um, I've tried to explain to Zave as a younger sort of kid trying to get into vlogging and things. It doesn't matter what, you know, if people don't like it, as long as you know, you know, you're being yourself and, and you're finding it interesting, then, you know, forget about the haters because you're always going to get people who, you know, don't, don't like you for some reason. Yeah, no, exactly that. Like... Probably, probably jealousy, who knows? It could be anything, couldn't it? A number yeah, of reasons. <laughs> well, uh, one of my one of my questions that I love asking, um, and I've been looking forward to asking you this one, is who's your biggest inspiration either in or out of the community? Um, I mean, at right at the start, um, there's an Instagram account. He's still obviously still around, well, sort of, but um, attraction images on Instagram. A, a lot, a, a lot of people know of him. Um, mm. he's he's got. 10k followers like me um he's such a nice guy uh, i used to do a podcast with him okay um but he w has been around for much longer than me um his photography i learned so much off him it's just mm. unreal um and more recently he hasn't been posting as much um i think it's more behind the scenes stuff um i'm, I'm not too sure so i wouldn't want to comment on it but mm um yeah no he he was my biggest inspiration at the start entirely um and uh yeah i mean other than that um it's sort of i know it sounds a bit cheesy and a bit naff but almost everyone on instagram sort of <laughs> inspires because like it it you just go through Instagram, you scroll, and you can see something like that someone's taken. You're like, mm. that's that's a really cool image. That's a mm. really cool way to do that. And there's so many creatives on Instagram within the theme park community. Yeah. Oh god. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, all of them are just feeding off each other, and I think it's really good. And that's one thing um, I've noticed, especially with you know with the guys at, at OTT and stuff it's just so everyone's just so supportive of each other you know and and they're happy to go and give you a comment a comment on your video and give it a watch and give you a little critique and and that's what i love about it everyone is so friendly and so sort of up for working together and oh it's yeah, brilliant it's, it's been it's awesome just, the, yeah. the community online has just been like one of the 
best things. It's great. About... It? I notice you whenever you put up anything new or the support you get just through, you know, people genuinely just enjoying the image, you know, and sharing a story. Or, yeah. And that, that's so cool for us to see just like, I like that. I like to see that because it's just more support for the community and, you know, more support for good creators yeah. like yourself. And I appreciate now after doing it for a while that, you know, we need that, you know, that little bit of income or that little bit of support yeah you know, to keep keep you going i would never i would never as well like shy away from giving anyone because like like i was saying about that inspiration like mm. there was an example not too long ago i saw a shot um by uh theme park rich on oh, yeah. instagram yeah no, and okay. i i i loved it I, I thought it was such a cool idea and i thought um I thought I, I kind of want to recreate it, yeah. but there's, there's no, there's never any sort of way where I wouldn't. So I posted it and I said, like f this shot was fully inspired by at theme park rich. Cause like he deserved the full credit. He yeah. inspired me to do that. And I, I like, that's probably my biggest sort of thought of inspiration behind uh, something recently because well you'll find somebody like rich and I, I you know i'm familiar with rich's account it's the oblivion yeah. logo isn't it with yeah rich, that's him yeah like rich yeah and um it, like i said love the guy always there to give you a like and he would appreciate that you know rather than in yesteryear when i was you know maybe coming up and growing up in like the media game through the pubs and clubs there was so much jealousy and cutthroat and you know going behind somebody's back like because we're in small communities in the bars mm. and clubs so one bar had you know go and do something to de detrimental to the next bar and but in this community it's completely different you know if, yeah if I you were that's... to put, put up something that's inspired by rich he's just going to share that and think yeah oh my god you know i've inspired thrill riders who he probably <laughs> is, is you know is inspired by you so it's just this yeah. this lovely circle of that's the thing love. yeah i mean everyone they everyone deserves credit if they yeah if it's their idea and there's so much creativity in the community it's mad i think the i mean it's no it's no secret that twitter gets slightly more <laughs> toxic but, yeah um because it's I, a little bit more anonymous i think isn't it you know yeah. if there is any jealousy or spite feelings it's it's going to be directed yeah. on twitter and it? it's because you can literally it's just so easy just for people just to post their thoughts which is kind of dangerous i literally i just go to twitter share my daily picture and then run but um <laughs> that's uh that's don't stick as around as to hear the fallout just get out of there just, i'm <laughs> sure there's a lot of positivity there but yeah that's amazing well moving on then big question this what is your favorite park you've ever visited yeah, that's a that is a big it's question. It's a big um, question. I couldn't answer it because that's why I asked it because I need some advice to answer it myself because it's I, just so difficult. I don't know if I'm going to be able to say one. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to, right. So let me put it this way then. I'm going to, I am an evil, evil man and I'm going to wipe out every theme park bar one. And it's oh the only God. theme park you can ever visit again. Okay, so my, my girlfriend would kill me if I didn't say um, Walt Disney World. Um, oh, man. <laughs> but I'm not um, taking that as an answer, Marcus. <laughs> um, I, I personally, I love Fantasyland. Um, yes. I think it is just such a... It's just such a well-themed park in a tiny space. Like, it, there's the way they've had to transition between themed lands mm. um, is literally like, dude, have a double-sided wall. And yeah, one yeah. side would be Africa, one side would be Mexico. <laughs> like I've seen at the back, is it fly the new, the new yeah. home of flying coast? Like there's a massive, it, what looks like a building, like a steampunk building, but it is literally like a it's wall, just, a, wall, just yeah. a, a sound wall. And it's, but it's amazingly themed. And that's the, that's the difference. That it's one of my huge bucket list parks, Fantasyland. Mm. If we I, can travel this year, oh, I there. went. I went before Fly. Actually, I went in 2017, so oh, okay. years ago. But Fly was they just started yeah. advertising Fly in 2017, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, in 2018, I'll come I'll back, back for Fly." <laughs> 2018 Little did you went. know? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, it's only just last year, wasn't it, that it started taking. Yeah, riders, pretty much. So. Yeah, it just it was just. Remember the little bit of time where we got some sunshine and roller coasters in between lockdowns and, and yeah. everybody having bad hurt. It was just in that time they opened it. 
But apparently mm. the first day it opened was just a random, there yeah. was no sort of pre-announcement. It, and uh, imagine being at Fantasia Land and just suddenly you can go and fly. Yeah. Amazing. I think Fantasia and Flamingo Land, two things that you, two parks that you never thought would be in the same conversation. No. But, um, <laughs> so I say, where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the one thing they shared was that they just haven't spoken at all about their new rides. Yeah. Mm. Like... They're just kind of mm. like, we, know, we all know it's there. Yeah. But, but they just don't even bring it up. In, it's like you bring it up in a conversation, they shy away from like... Yeah, just answer anything. any question but that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I, I it was weird um, because I, I was planning on going to fly as, as soon as possible, but I... Mm because it was such a last minute just drop like here and i noticed a few uk sort of creators went over and i just thought i wish i had that kind of flexibility and yeah. you know even even like at the time because the work's been so short i thought like how are people affording this you know even on a furlough and stuff it's it's difficult yeah so, yeah i didn't have that kind of resources unfortunately but i'm hoping if we can fly this year or if not next year is definitely going to be a huge huge coaster year Hundred percent. Oh yeah. yeah. So moving on from that, then it's a similar one. But what's your favourite UK park, Marcus? That's that's an easy one. That's yeah. that has to be Towers. Oh okay. It just does because it's just the 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 number of coasters and the sort of size of the park and mm. how unique it is. I I mean another sort of obvious obvious competitor would be Fort, but yeah. I. I think the crowd, I said it before, but I think the crowd has let Fort down in more recent years. Mm. And um, that's half of a theme park, um, the people that are around you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, they're both brilliant theme parks. Mm. Um, and I know what you mean. Like, Towers has got that little something special, hasn't it? You, know, like, you can go and have a picnic in the gardens and you, you could be anywhere in the world, really, couldn't you? It, you yeah. know, and then you walk, you know, a mile this way and you've got, you know, one of the most legendary B&M inverts ever. And, you know, the first it's, ever flyer, you've got the first ever uh, dive machine. I know what you mean. You, it's more of an escape. Like, yeah. that sort of escapism thing. Like, go, like, going into Fort Park, the island thing is really cool. And it's mm. a really unique thing to have. But, like... I think Thorpe's, if you're a coaster fanatic, through and through i think thought your spot you know there's no walking it's small it's got great coasters but yeah if you if you're into them all your theme parks and an experience and you want a day out you know you, yeah. i don't think you can knock alton towers for that can you no it's it, in my opinion it's a clear winner for the uk first rolls me perfectly into this question 13 good or bad <laughs> i'm asking because i'm trying my best to trigger danny into getting on front row and, and giving his opinion but yeah what, what are your thoughts uh well i i'm quite vocal about this um a lot of the I, I already know this i know the answer <laughs> already, already. The answer. i've seen it in many a comment <laughs> um yeah it's uh it first seems brilliant i think it as a themed experience um I think 13, honestly. I mean, don't get me wrong. When it opened, I didn't like it. I'll be very like clear about yeah. that. I didn't. But like had 13. you been following the marketing for it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly why. that. Yeah. And I was sort of, <laughs> yeah, I was sort of thinking like, what's the point in a, the drop scared me. The drop even still scares me. Like, I'm not a big fan of like, I, I'm, I'm, I hate drop towers. And okay. The is it the, like the feeling the airtime feel the heavy yeah yeah is. i know what you mean it took me a while to get used to that <laughs> it's terrifying yeah um, it is. but like so the 30 the, the drop on 13 still gets me not to the same level but like it still gets me um but like i was sort of i was sort of thinking like the outside bit is pointless in comparison yeah. to the to the how cool the drop is yeah but then um then i did it back row and um back row is pretty good i mean yeah. like just the airtime coming off the first drop for me i i remember when i first went on it i was pretty pretty shocked i wasn't a huge enthusiast i, I knew my stuff a little bit but 
I wasn't, I'd sort of lulled. Xavier was a little bit too young for it. I'd got kind of out, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd got a girlfriend basically. And I, you know, I was trying to act cool for a few years. Went on 13 and I was, I wasn't underwhelmed. I was shocked by the drop track and everything, but it took me a few goes to realize actually that's pretty pants this. You know, I didn't really like the ride, but then a few years later, me and Xavier did it at Skurfest pitch black. Yeah, the, the camera on the first drop blinded, blinded by me. the flash, and I thought, and the that that bit then became exciting, you know. But so I'm up in arms a little bit. I don't like the ride, and I think as a secret weapon, it was disappointing as hell. And yeah. I still do like now. If there's a queue, I'll think I'm not bothering. But that ride on Skurfest in the dark was I think was special. I think it's always like quite similar for, from what I hear, like and the same with what I just said, like at the start most people didn't like it mm. and then like more and more people and spe- like talking for myself as well like has come to like it later on mm. and um i know what you mean i do I-, I love the theme of it um i just wish that there was some sort of uh pathway secret path that i could go and photograph it because it's just impossible for it's, me. it's so hard yeah um, it's getting ride shots of it apart from the lift hill yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah 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 so we're both in agreement it's absolutely pants brilliant we'll move no, on from that no, then no. um we we actually kind of touched on this earlier but um if you just want to sort of summarize it what tips would you give to anybody watching who wants to have a start a channel or get into f- photography within the community um yeah i mean what i was saying earlier about the just be yourself and engage in that sort of direction um i think that's that's good and just build an identity and just stick to it because Mm. it's quite tempting to um to like even down the line you you think of like oh i should have should have named my account that Mm. and then (laughs) <laughs> then you'll change your name but then you've just lost all of the sort of everyone's got to know the previous name so Course, yeah. I, I see that quite a lot there's loads of different things like but like i think just build an identity and um specifically to photography i just sort of you know you don't have to get the most expensive gear mm. um and i keep saying this to people you just don't need to um the camera i've been that most of my shots have taken on on, on my Instagram, um, the the actual body of it is a is a really old DSLR body. It's it's the Canon 5D Mark II. Oh, all right, okay. And um, only up until recently, I I bought I've bought a new camera. I still have the old Canon, but um, I and some you know even on professional shoots because you have to basically professional shoots are so quick you have to sort of dual wield two cameras because mm. it's quicker than switching lenses. So you could have a wide on one and a tight on one. So I still use the 5D in a professional setting. Um, but, you know, you can buy that camera body for probably about 300 quid off eBay. Okay. And that's what I did. I bought it really cheap. And um, But even in, a, even in a much less sense, you can buy like it, anything that can you can slap a lens on or you know, for maybe a, a hundred quid or whatever, mm-hmm. there's, there's some super cheap DSLRs and you can just, because the lens forms the shot. Um, but then e- even if that's not out of the, que- even if, even if that's out of the question, like I still shoot shots on my phone, mm. like we all do. And there's so many cool things you can put, like places you can put your phone and stuff that you couldn't put a larger camera. Of course, yeah, I see a lot of things, you know, like upside down on like water to get reflection shots. Yeah. And and like even even just like using the filters and stuff, you know, built in filters just to give it like grainy edges and things. And sometimes it looks good. Coasters like um, the Smiler, Mm. you can, you know, especially in the queue line, I see so many great pictures from the queue line. And all taken off phone yeah and i've taken some really cool pictures just off phone because it doesn't doesn't matter like you all you need to do is have something that you can slip through the hole in the fence yeah the other the white the mesh you know yeah yeah because it yeah the smiley's cue line is literally a horrible oh it's um, horrific yeah you've either got the the metal mesh or like the 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 ropey mesh yeah the netting yeah yeah such a shot spoiler (laughs) yeah literally but um yeah, I mean, 
all of that just just start off just your go phone or off just like mm. you don't have to have you don't have to spend thousands of pounds um mm. that's sort of my photography advice i guess and the awesome. best the, the, the other bit of advice is just uh, don't let people judge you for having a camera like because mm. the amount of times i've had people not not I guess sort of heckle but like you know like people you, you know if you're holding a, a large camera yeah a decent camera part, yeah you know people can like you'll get looks and stuff like that um but doesn't it just doesn't really matter yeah. you, you, you never see these people again and then you just gotta stick by what you do I've had it before where we're vlogging and you know you love people like oh vloggers or yeah or even trying to get on the shot and stuff and like you say just persevere keep going and the thing, the thing is that the community sort of aspect is much sort of stronger than the oh, people yeah. that um, the people that might make comments in a park. It's just, it's mad, um, actually. But yeah, I mean, just just go out and take pictures, and then the more you take pictures, the more you'll think, oh, I should have done that. But that's mm. fine because you're it's in a learning point. learning curve, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've still learned every shot I take. I, I'm like, okay, I, I could do that like that next time. You know, it's awesome. Every, we all do it. Yeah. The best, the best people have never stopped learning. You know, that's what I've always thought is you never stop advancing or even that now when I think oh, I've, I've really, you know, found a nice little, a way of doing these videos. I'll see a video that blows everything out of the water. And I think, wow, like, you know, even seeing things like your cinematics. I remember we mentioned <laughs> park spills. Um, yeah. or your, your photos and, Parksville cinematics in like Alton Towers. Like I'd never watch a, just a random, you know, like snapshot of Alton Towers. I've been that many times. I've vlogged it that many times. But I find myself watching something like a cinematic and thinking like, wow, look at these shots. You know, mm. getting, getting inspired by, you know, different angles and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. So then your bucket list, parks and coasters. Now, I want to know uh, a park that you've never visited that you're dying to visit and your upcoming... Uh, like new coaster that's that's either come out sort of this year or is about to come out what's your bucket list um the coaster is definitely fly um yeah. it just everything about it is I, i've always loved the you know like at disneyland paris and you've got their sort of i their sort of steampunk look on tomorrowland yeah yeah I always thought it would be mad to have a coaster that's just fully steampunk. And then I loved flying coasters as well. And then obviously fly came to be, and then Damn. it's like the perfect combo. Like hand um, plucked out of Marcus's dreams, that coaster. Yeah. Weren't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, bucket list park. Um, in the past, I probably would have said Cedar point, mm -hmm. but I think more now I'm more keen to get to uh, Tokyo. Oh yeah. And yeah. and do um you know Disney Sea and then um Would travel across to Fuji like Q. Fuji Q, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. I think that they seem sort of so because they're so far away and it in my mind growing up, sort of like Europe and America were always sort of holiday destinations, you know, yeah. like Florida and but like Tokyo and over to like East Asia and places like that was never kind of you know, it was never anything that, that my yeah. family or people where I'm from would do because I think of the cost involved and it's so far away and and uh, so different. So, yeah, I think with me that that's similar. I want to just get over there and experience how, you know, like, like you say, it's the other end of the world. How Change do they the deal with, yeah, so such a different, I want to go and see like what the food stalls are like at Disney and, you know, yeah, how they yeah. take on like the giant sausage and, and the <laughs> tur turkey leg. Like what do they have over there? It would be insane. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great shout. Great shout. And what are your plans then? We're coming almost to the end of the interview here, and I've loved it. But what are your plans for 2021? We want to know where we can find you. I'm going to personally want to hunt you down and feel your hair. So, <laughs> where are you going to be, Marcus? Where whereabouts are you heading this year? Where's your your plans? Um, well, I'm heading to. I'm going to be everywhere. I'm going to try and be as many places as possible. When You're just I can. going to be like a god, just omnipresent. You just literally yeah. wherever anyone is, you're just going to pop up. Essentially, yeah, I yeah. love that. I just appear. Um, I so I mean, opening week is busy for all of us. Yeah. Um, you know, it's literally a case of Thorpe Towers and then Chessington in three consecutive days. Love that. Um, 
So but, is, that, is that opening day? You're heading out Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On uh, on Thorpe on the twelfth, um, Towers thirteenth, and Chessington fourteenth. Uh, but um, yeah, I I just planned to be as many parks as possible. I originally was planning to do a European road trip. Um, this is uh starting to like it won't happen yeah i was Um, i was in a similar situation (laughs) yeah but um the furthest i basically it was it was a it was the euro tunnel i booked it um last year and i can only push it back a year from when it was booked right so and that is till um july in summer so there's got to be there's got to be a way though surely if we're not allowed to travel they have to accommodate you surely yeah i mean hopefully but fingers um, crossed yeah that that's likely to i don't know actually to be honest there's there's still like a couple of months until then who knows what could happen um i've got my fingers crossed but i just don't know at the moment um but yeah i mean plans for this year i mean like yeah, just going to all the parks. Literally, like do uh, it. Just experience what we've lost yeah. out on, and and meeting as many people as possible. Like you said, yeah. like uh, I would love to meet you. And I've, I've met Danny in person. Um, I was sat down on the lawns at Towers, and he walked <laughs> over, and I was taller than him, even when I was sat down. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I just think like yeah, just meet as many people as possible. Um, yeah, that sounds awesome. That's that's basically it. Happy days, mate. Sounds good to me. We need to, I think we just need to get over the last sort of two years. We'll, we'll forget all about it as soon as we're in, in the park. Yeah. I think if I hit Energylandia for me, yeah, that's where I need to, I need to really experience Energylandia. So, um, Energylandia, yeah. That's yeah. Beautiful. We were meant oh. to be going, but we got the trip cancelled because COVID and everything. So, oh, that's my number one. I can't wait. As soon as international travel is allowed, I'll be, I'll be over to Krakow, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. So many so, good rides. That has been amazing. Before I leave you, I've got one question from Twitter. Uh, it's from Coaster Zave, who's actually part of Inversion Addicts, and he wants to know Energylandia or Cedar Point. What would your your preferred part be out of the two? I mean, I'd probably. I've never done Cedar Point, but I'd probably say Cedar Point. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's just that they're, they're quite similar in a way because they're they're both parks with just mm, just insane co- like coasters. But like, I'd, yeah, I'd say I'd say Cedar Point. Um, Cedar Point looks insane. I think a lot of people have been saying it's sort of like Energylandia is becoming the Cedar Point of Europe. You know that yeah. kind of vibe. So, and it's and so young. Like yeah, it's... Energylandia is like only like a few years old. It's just on, <laughs> we keep saying it's on sandbox mode. They're just, Literally. just building stuff. The unlimited money cheat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, mate. Well, I, I, once again, thanks so much for coming on, mate. We're going to link all your channel, your YouTube channel, your Instagram. Everything will be linked in there. And um, yeah, let's let's hope that, like you say, we can have a good 2021 yeah. and beyond. So but yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. You're an absolute legend. Anybody who hasn't already, make sure you go and check out Thrill Riders. But yeah, cheers for coming on, Marcus. You're an absolute no, legend, mate. Me. Yeah, it's been really good. Thank you. Top, man. So you guys, thanks everyone for watching. You've been watching Front Row here at OTT. And look out for me or another one of the team holding up an interview and holding another person in our community at Ransom. So there we go. (laughs) But yeah, thanks for coming on again, Marcus. Everyone who's watching, thank you so much. And thanks for watching OTT.